Okay, we're continuing to look at trig graphs, but now we want to talk about some problems where we're given a graph and then we're asked to find First of all, they oftentimes ask us to find the amplitude, the period, and the phase shift, and then they end up asking us <clears throat> to write the equation for that trig graph. Now, one of the things they're going to have to do is when they give us a trig graph, they need to tell us from the start whether they want the equation to be a sine equation or a cosine equation. Remember the two standard forms of the equation. If it's a sine equation, A times sine BX plus C or if it's a cosine equation, A times cosine BX plus C. So just so you know, let's talk through our strategy for doing these kinds of problems. And my goal is to do three examples. <clears throat> so you're given a graph, for instance, in a minute, I have a graph just like this. And what we're gonna do from that graph, we can look at that graph and we can figure out the amplitude, the period, and the phase shift. Now beyond that, once we know the amplitude, period, and phase shift, we can work backwards with some of our formulas and we can figure out the values for A, B, and C. And these will be the A, B, and C's that go into one of these formulas. And then once we know A, B, and C, we can of course write the equation. So that's what we're going to do here. So let me go ahead and put one of these graphs up here and I'm going to try and actually just do my work on the actual graph so we can see what's going on. So here's a graph. Now once again, I told you a minute ago when we're asked to find the equation of a graph, we have to be told whether they want it to be in the form of a sine wave equation or a cosine. And in this case, They want it to be a sine equation. So the first step is to look at my graph and to figure out the amplitude and the period and the phase shift. Amplitude is always pretty easy, right? You sort of look at the middle of your graph, you see how far it is up to the maximum, in this case, two and four here, this must be three. And just to confirm it, you go look at the bottom, um, bottom and this is negative three. So the amplitude from the graph is three, and I can right away determine my A, because A is the amplitude. Let's see if we can find the period. So the way you find a period is you find some special point on the graph, and then you move along the graph and see how far you have to move until you arrive at that same exact spot. In other words, let's look here where x is 0, or my angle is 0. It's like I'm moving up through 0. So let's start here. I'm going to try and trace this graph 
until I do the same finger where I move up through zero. So here I go up, I reach this peak, I go down. Now, at this point, the graph is back at zero, but I'm moving down through zero. I want to know when I move up through zero. So I move down through zero, keep going down, get here to my minimum, come back up. Now as I come back up, I pass through zero, which means now, in a sense, I have now completed one cycle. I'm now back repeating what I have over here. So this distance is going to be my period. Hopefully you can see if it's zero here, this is 2 pi. So my period is 2 pi. Now, if we recall the little formula for the period, we learned the period was 2 pi over b. So I hope it's pretty obvious that therefore b must equal 1. So now let's go find the phase shift. And once we find the phase shift, then we'll be able to calculate what c is. Now the phase shift can be a little tricky. What you have to do, let me go back and talk about phase shift a little bit. You have to understand what the standard sine and the standard cosine wave looks like. So let's call this the standard sine and standard cosine. In other words, we've talked about this before. A standard sine wave, if your angle starts at zero, the standard sine wave at zero, the value is going to be zero, and it's going to go up here, and then back to zero, and down here, and back to zero. So the standard sine wave looks like this. And the standard cosine wave, same idea. except for the cosine, when it starts out, when the angle is zero, the cosine's up here, and it goes down, and then it goes to the minimum here and back up. Now what does a phase shift do? A phase shift says, for instance, a phase shift of a sine wave says, I'm going to take this whole graph, this whole wave, and shift the whole thing either to the left or to the right or to the left. If I move this thing to the right, that's considered a positive phase shift. If I move it to the left, that's considered a negative phase shift. Just for fun, let's assume this is a standard zero and we'll say this is 2 pi, so we'll say this is pi, sort of a standard. And let's say I want to draw a sine wave with a phase shift of pi over 2. What that means is, let me just do this and I'll draw it and you'll see how it looks. And the dashed line is now a sine wave with a phase shift of pi over 2. In other words, I've taken my original sine wave and moved it to the right pi over 2. If I do the same thing over here, Say I want to have a negative pi over 4 phase shift. 
for this cosine wave, what I do is negative power over 4 would be right here. So this distance from here to here is power over 4. So I take my wave and basically each point I move over pi over 4 and then I can draw so hopefully you can see how from here to here my normal cosine wave has moved over in this case a negative pi over 4 so what happens is when we are looking for a phase shift with the graph we're given we have to in our mind go back and sort of draw in or visualize what the standard in this case what the standard sine wave is well the standard sine wave at zero, it's zero, and it goes up and down and goes back to here. For this one, I'm saying this looks like a standard sine wave. It starts at zero, goes up, down, and back up. So what I'm saying is I believe for this one there is no phase shift and since the phase shift equals negative c over b and since we know b is 1 basically negative c equals 0 which means c equals 0 so what have we done by figuring out the amplitude and the period and the phase shift from this graph it gave us a way to determine the values of a b and c once I know A, B, and C, then I can write the equation of this graph. A is 3 times the sine. B is 1, so it's just x. And since C is 0, basically this is a graph of 3 sine x. All right, let's do another one. Maybe it'll be a little more complicated. All right, this one definitely looks different. Now this one, we're told, once again, they need to tell you what kind of uh, equation they want. This one, they want us to write the equation for this graph as a cosine wave. So once again, let's figure out the amplitude period and the phase shift. Amplitude, if you look, this is five up here. So I think this is one right here, and this is like negative one. So I believe the amplitude looks like it's one, which means A is going to be one. The period, if I go right here, where my angle is zero, I'm at the top. So let's see how far it takes me to get back to sort of the top of the wave. So from here to here, from zero to four pi. So it looks like the period for this one is four pi. Of course, I know the period what is formula is 2 pi over b. Let's solve this equation for b. If I multiply both sides by b and divide both sides by 4 pi, 2 pi over 4 pi, the pi's cancel out. Looks like b is one half. Now let's see if there's a phase shift. The phase shift is always tricky. So 
This is a cosine. We know the standard cosine wave, when the angle is zero, it starts up here at the top, and then it goes down and comes back up. It looks like, just like the last one, I do not believe there's a phase shift. This is already just like the cosine wave. So therefore, C is zero. So now that I know A, B, and C, I can say Y equals A is one, so cosine of one half X. All right, let's do one more, and my guess is this last one will probably have a phase shift. So let's see. So once again, we have to know whether they want this to be a sine or a cosine. In this case, they are looking for the equation to be as a sine wave. All right, if you do this enough, you sort of get the hang of it. It's not too difficult. Amplitude, it's two up here. It must be one here and negative one here. So it looks like amplitude equals one which means A is one. Period. Maybe if I start down here at zero, so I'm at the, sort of at the minimum, at the bottom valley. I go up, I come back, and I'm back here again. So from here to here, looks like pi. So the period is pi, which you know is Period can also be 2 pi over b. If we solve this thing for b, it's 2 pi over pi. Looks like b is 2. Now, is there a phase shift? Now, let's think about this. So now we're looking for a sine wave. We know a sine wave starts out at 0, and then it goes up and it comes down. As a matter of fact, I can try and draw the sine wave on here. Pi is my period, so it should go up here, go to here, and then to here, and then to here. And to here. So this is the standard sine wave. And you can see that my graph, it looks like it's shifted or moved to the right. In other words, it looks like that's the phase shift. Now, how far is this? Well, from here to here is pi over 2. Looks like it's halfway, so that must be pi over 4. And since it's in a positive direction, it looks like the phase shift is pi over 4. Now we know the phase shift equals negative c over b, although we know b is going to be 2. Let's go down here and let's solve this equation. So I have pi over 4 equals negative c over 2. If I multiply both sides by negative 2, so it looks like c is going to be negative pi over 2. So now I know my A, B, and C, so I can say the equation for this graph, A is 1, so sine, B is 2, the phase shift is a negative, and there's the equation of this graph. All right, hopefully... Once you start to do some of those, you can get the hang of it, and it will not be too difficult.